good. No, I'm great. Hi, I'm Sally Glass, and welcome to episode 165 of Art This Week. In this week's episode, we visit Brand 10 Art Space and speak with Stefan Hillebrand, one fourth of the group Hillebrand and Magsman, about the group, the working relationship of the group, and the group's art. Now for Art This Week. Hillebrand, Magsman, we're a collaborative team. Uh, Mary and I met in graduate school. We both attended the Cranbrook Academy of Art, and it's a, it's a great story because when we first met uh, throughout graduate school, we hated each other. We were at each other's throats um, in critiques, and um, uh, we were actually close, very close studio mates. We were always getting into arguments. Uh, we got in this huge... Uh, discussion the very first time we met and she said art was all about theory and concept and I was saying art was all about craft and making and process and from that moment on we did it. But long story short, what happened was that after we got out of graduate school we, we realized we didn't hate each other at all. We were actually madly in love and the reason why we were getting in kind of such heated discussions was that our work was so similar and that both visually and conceptually and thematically uh, we, ha we were just had things in common. And we started collaborating. And at first when we were collaborating, it was um, each doing our own work, but each was helping each other. And about two years after doing that, we realized that our work no longer was two people's voices, but really a singular voice. And that's when we decided to say, in, in the history of great uh, Fischl and Weiss, uh, Gilbert and George, the Yes Men, you know, all these wonderful, uh, rich, historical uh, collaborative teams that we would do the same. So we decided to give ourselves that moniker of, of Hillebrand Magsman. We've been collaborating for about 12 years, 13 years now as a team, but it's within the last four years that I think Hillebrand Magsman is now Hillebrand Magsman plus Madeline plus Emmett uh, plus daughter plus son because we started incorporating our children into our artwork as well. So it's really the four of us rather than just the two of us. And it was very early on, about five or six years ago, we had moved to Houston. I think our daughter was maybe three years old, our son was one, and we had a babysitter taking care of them when we were in the studio. And one day we were just sitting around, just totally depressed. We were like, here we are in this white cubicle of a studio, trying to make artwork that's relevant to our lives and other people's lives, when our life is going on uh, someplace else. It, it just, it, it hit us like a, a ton of bricks. It was like, how can we be making art which is to reflect our lives when our lives are occurring there. And we got very sad, and we have both been a fan for a very long time of the Fluxus movement, of taking uh, the everyday and making it funny and uh, uh, pertinent and um, kind of elevating it. And so we said, well, if, if, we, if we like such kind of art historical movements, and if we're depressed, not being with our children, then we have to use them. And so we started using them in very kind of simple photographs and little tiny performances. And again, um, there's a strong and rich precedent, I think, for that, for artists either using their own family lives uh, or their, their domestic settings as, as their, their food for their practice. So when we got the invitation to be part of Brand 10 and, and X, um, we first thought about doing a, a completely new body of work. But the more that we thought about it, we wanted it like, um, like, a, like our own lives again, like this kind of cafeteria, um, lubies, all you can eat, and a sampling of all the things that we've done in the last two to three years. So you're going to see uh, photography, 
you're going to see uh, polar fleece blankets, images made on polar fleece blankets, uh, printed at Walmart. Uh, you're going to see video, uh, sculpture, and, um, and photographs from different series. The common thread, I think, that goes through all of the work, again, is that this is our lives, that we've made our home uh, kind of our art practice, and we've made our, um, our lives with our children our art practice. Uh, we'll also be showing seven videos, uh, one of them brand new, and the others have been done within the last year or year and a half. Uh, and they range from the piece Hole, where we take a sledgehammer and a sawzall and we cut holes in every single wall and door in our house to create a habit trail. And so our family, all four of us, go from one room to another trying to escape our lives in this habit trail. But the crazy thing is, and there's this Tom Cruise Mission Impossible music playing in the background, uh, we don't go anywhere. We're stuck in our house and we just keep going through all these little habit trail holes that, that we, we have made. Uh, another uh, video that we're doing is called Do-It-Yourself Love Seat, which is a beautiful uh, piece. Uh, the very first piece of furniture Mary and I ever bought as a married couple was a couch. And about a year ago, Mary over coffee said, I have this wonderful idea for art. Uh, I'm going to cut up our couch with a chainsaw. <laughs> and my mouth almost dropped and I said, are, are, you, are you crazy? This is the first thing that we've ever bought? Do we need to see a marriage counselor or something? She goes, no, it's great. We'll cut it in half and then you will duct tape it together. She's in her wedding dress, I'm in my wedding suit, and she comes with a chainsaw and high heels and cuts it right in half and pulls all the stuffing out and then I come back and with duct tape I try to pull this, pull this couch together. And so we, we get their feedback, and it will happen a lot uh, in, the, in the series of Emmett called Masking, where we're putting this photograph, uh, photographing him in these masks to look at what it means to be a man in a mask or a young boy in a mask in our today's culture, because it means so many different things between a suburban Houstonite middle class a person to maybe a Middle Eastern uh, uh, young boy um, or an Asian boy or, or anybody else, uh, he was very responsive. He goes, I want to use these kind of masks. These are good. These are bad. Uh, I would like to sit this way. I would like to pick out the backgrounds. It was actually his idea to start putting the backgrounds on. He goes, I want to match it. Um, and so that becomes very, very collaborative. You know, of course they don't, as a six and a ten-year-old, they don't have the, I would call it the aesthetic background that Mary and I have of making certain choices, but I think they still are learning and they have very good um, guttural or instinctive choices. And that's also guided them, uh, once somebody once asked, you know, well, there's all other artists, people like Sally Mann, who is... Uh, photograph their children, would you photograph your children in the nude or, uh, you know, unclothed? And they're very conscious about, you know, 
I don't like this picture. I don't want you to use it anymore in your shows. Uh, this one I think is hilarious. Keep using it. And we do. We honor that. We say, okay, you don't have to, Madeline, no more pictures of you in your underwear. You're 10 years old and uh, we won't show that anymore. And they're like, okay. We want to thank Hillebrand and Maximin for speaking with us. You can find more information on them at hillebrandmaximin.com. We also want to thank Brand 10 Artspace for letting us film in the gallery. For more information on the gallery and these great exhibitions, go to brand10artspace.com. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. Okay. <laughs> in this week's episode, we speak with Brand 10 Artspace and... <laughs> no, I'm great. Uh, in this week's episode, we visit Brand 10 Art Space and speak speak, speak <laughs> and speak with. Hold on. <laughs>